Hello, everyone. This is Professor He. Nice to see you again. The topic of this task is about the tasks of the second law of thermodynamics. The first subtask is the objectives of the second law of thermodynamics. Let's start by reviewing the first law of thermodynamics. The first law shows that, firstly, the conversion and transfer of various forms of energy in nature will not cause any changes in total energy. Secondly, Creating energy is impossible. So is eliminating energy. Lastly, all processes in nature must obey the first law of thermodynamics. A device that violates the first law of thermodynamics is called a perpetual motion machine of the first kind, and a device that violates the second law of thermodynamics is called a perpetual motion machine of the second kind. Reverse process, such as process of hot cafe becoming cold, friction generating heat or water flowing to low place satisfy the first law alone does not ensure that the process will actually take place. A new law is required and it is the second law of thermodynamics. We will talk about the process orientation or the process direction. The process in our daily life always proceeds spontaneously in a certain direction. Heat is always spontaneously transferred from objects with high temperature to objects with low temperature. It is common experience that a cup of hot coffee in a cooler room eventually cools off. This process satisfies the first law of thermodynamics since the amount of energy lost by the coffee is equal to the amount gained by the surrounding air. Now, let's consider the reverse process. The hot coffee getting even hotter in a cooler room as a result of heat transfer from the room air. We all know that this process never takes place, yet doing so would not violate the first law as long as the amount of energy lost in the air is equal to the amount gained by the coffee. Mechanical energy is always converted into thermal energy spontaneously. Gas always expands spontaneously. From the above examples, we then get the conclusion. All kinds of process in nature are directional. Actual process can be divided into spontaneous process or non-spontaneous process. So what is the spontaneous process? The spontaneous process is a process driven by a certain potential difference 
within the system without resorting to any external action. Examples: Heat is transferred from high temperature to low temperature. Kinetic energy becomes thermal energy, and high pressure gains expands. What is the non-spontaneous process? It is a process that can only be carried out with the help of surrounding influences. Examples: heat transfer from low temperature to high temperature. Thermal energy changes to kinetic energy, gains compression. The second subtask is about the direction, the condition, and the limit of a process, which will be answered by the second law. Let's first talk about the direction for a process. The first law. Only shows that various energies can be transformed into each other, and cannot explain the direction of transformation between various energies. Secondly, let's talk about the condition happened for a process. As we have learned, the condition for a Spontaneous process to be preceded is a certain potential difference within the thermal system. For the non-spontaneous process, it is a certain effect from the surroundings. Conditions for the process to be preceded can be summarized in two sentences. One. All non-spontaneous process must be accompanied by spontaneous process from time to time. Two, there must be a historical accumulation of non-spontaneous process before all spontaneous process are carried out. Now, let's talk about the last task of the second law. The limits for a process. One, the first law only serves the conservation of various amounts of energy in energy conversion. Two, the second law serves the differences and limitations of energy conversion. Three. The thermal efficiency of the heat engine also has its theoretical maximum under certain conditions. The first and the second laws reveal the basic laws of the energy conversion process from different perspectives. The first law. Illustrates the conservation of quantity in the process of energy conversion from the perspective of quantity. The second law reflects the quantity reduction characteristics of energy conversion from the quantity aspect. The essence of energy conversion. Is that the energy quality is different according to the conversion ability or the quality of energy? Energy can be divided into three different quantities of energy: one, infinitely conversible energy, the energy that can be completely Converted into work theoretically, and this is advanced energy. Examples: mechanical energy, electrical energy, water energy, wind 
energy. Two, unconvertible energy. Energy that cannot theoretically be converted into work. Examples, environmental thermal energy with temperature of T0 in K. Three, finitely convertible energy. Energy that cannot be completely converted into work in theory, and this is low-level energy. Examples, thermal energy, entropy, thermodynamic energy with temperature different with T0. The third subtask is the importance of the second law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics is concerned with the energy balance, the quantity of the energy. The second law of thermodynamics is concerned with the direction, the condition, and the limit for the energy conversion and transfer process. It is important in many disciplines of natural science. The first and the second laws of thermodynamics are the two laws that constitute a complete description of the law of energy conversion and they complement each other. Some great people said, any discipline, even the most uninteresting and boring discipline, once combined with the second law of thermodynamics, is like boiled water and it flowering to become a tasteable soup. Okay, that's all for this time. Thank you very much and see you next time.